with Dominique. Um, Dominique, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Dominique. I was born and raised in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, left home right after high school, moved to Paris, France. Um, in Paris, I studied acting and began a modeling career. Um, I'm married. I live with two other roommates apart from my husband. I have three sisters. Okay. I don't know what else to be on What would you like to work on today? The hypnosis? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess the issues will all come out. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've never been to any kind of therapy before. Okay. Um, although, actually, I do have one issue which. Um, a lot of people go to therapy for. I'm bipolar too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That means that I have hypomanic episodes where I have a lot of energy right. and I make bold career moves and right. I get up and dance on tables and I don't need a lot of sleep and I don't need to eat a lot and then I go through more depressive periods. Um, it's not that clearly defined, but. What kind of uh, career change? Um, well, I think partly because of this, uh, the fact of my condition, I, um, I like the job I have, which um, I'm a model, I am an actress, and I work booking musical acts and right. brokering uh, performance deals. So I'm on my schedule, I'm my own boss, um, and I meet different people all the time, and That's when cool. there are opportunities, I can jump at them. Um, but I can also easily take time off or uh, reschedule things, move them around. Right. Um, and it keeps me interested. If I was just sitting in an office every day, I think I really would go crazy. Yeah, I agree. Um, I I'm not, yeah, can't do that kind of thing. So I guess that's, that's why I chose this particular career, which is simply to, I guess, be myself. Right. Um, all of me, poser, organizer. Earlier you talked about you have a lot of confidence but lower on the self esteem. Yeah. What 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 is the distinction between the two and the I think there's a huge difference. Um, I I guess I'm pretentious and confident and outgoing and um, I'm not afraid in any way to put myself out there. I like being on the runway or on stage, organizing something in charge, people looking at me. Um, that kind of confidence I've got. I don't have any problem right. doing underwear modeling. I don't have any problem speaking in front of a lot of people. But low self-esteem, I mean, I think that the reason perhaps that I put myself out there so much is because um, I don't, I inside myself don't actually think that much of myself. Like if. I always need to be, um, what's the word? <laughs> like, you know, if somebody tells me, if somebody tells me, oh, you're looking really good, then, I, you know, it, it makes me feel, like, better. But, but then I need to hear that because myself is not thinking that I'm thinking that I'm looking really good, you know? You're looking really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, but I mean, like, I need to be, um, like, to have things affirmed for me. Like, oh, you're talented, or not necessarily by people saying it, but people being interested enough to watch me or to pay me to model or to, right. is my way of affirming right. my worth. Right. See, if people will listen to me, obviously, you know, I'm worth listening to. If people will pay to take pictures of me, obviously, I'm pretty. And if people will, you know, um, pay me to organize something for them, then obviously, you know, it's just a way of uh, affirming constantly. Which is good, I mean, it's a challenge. Right, right. <laughs> but I'm saying that, like, if I'm just, especially with the depressive stages of right. um, bipolar 2, um, you tend to go through, um, A, like, you'll, you'll need to sleep a lot. During the hypomanic phases, you don't sleep a lot. You, you sleep a lot, um, you eat more, um, and you're generally just a little bit more lethargic. Um, but it also makes you think of, like not much of yourself. Like the, right. the, the depression is not so much like, oh, I, I can't do anything. Or, 
Yeah, it's it's um, you you don't think a lot of yourself like oh, it, it's not like I'm gonna kill myself, but you right. start to kind of oh I sound so silly, oh I look so stupid, oh I look so fat, oh I uh, whatever. My life is pointless right. um, because it's a chemical imbalance that you tend to. I mean, it becomes very mental, obviously. Yeah. Well, we we cannot deal with bipolar altogether. <laughs> this is not the purpose of, of today's session, but uh, we can. Bipolar is a big word, and and why don't we bring it down to earth a little bit more? Like point down to one or two things that that so is. Should I turn my uh, phone off? I think it will be the same. Thing. Okay. Oh, um, break down what, what that actually means? Yeah, to you. Like bipolar is bipolar disorder is is is, is a label that, that, that psychologists use. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it's definitely not a word that, that you would describe what you would like to improve about your life. Right? No. Um I guess that or, well, I was diagnosed when I was 15, and before that, I just thought that I was, you know, a difficult teenager, or right. somebody who, you know, if I couldn't sleep, my mother would tell me, like, you're being naughty, so <laughs> you can't, okay. you know, um, and I don't know, I would lose patience, I would I would have mood swings, and I was angry, and I was depressed, and I, right. I would punch a wall, and I thought, you know, I was just a teenager, and, oh, it's your hormones, you know, okay. and then when I got diagnosed, they said it's a mood and personality disorder, um, we can medicate it to help fix it, and I was like, um, <laughs> I didn't want to really fix my personality, so instead I adapted my career, for example, right. around right. it, um, right. and you know that a lot of the things that are adjectives that you'd use to describe me are right. adjectives that are also like symptoms, <laughs> um, like the energetic or the low right. self-esteem, or um, I mean all of those things. Right. Well, again, like that is very much a psychological diagnosis and like a medical diagnosis. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the low self-esteem. I'm self not like a then. medical doctor, so we can work on self-esteem. We can work on you having longer attention span and more patience. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess then, yeah, and then uh, the self-esteem is really, I guess, the big issues because that would that's what gets me depressed, I guess. Mm. What do you mean by depressed? Um, well, I get very seriously depressed, or like I don't want to get out of bed, and um, right. I don't know. It seems like at, during those times, everything I say, I think I sound like an idiot, and I think that I look fat, and I just I, my self esteem just goes down through the floor. If you have better self esteem, do you feel you? Like if if you can walk around feeling confident, like like confident inside yourself, and having higher self esteem, do you think that you'll be as likely to have a depressive? No, period? I know, absolutely not. So, if you work on your self esteem, and if you walk around having a better feeling of well being about yourself, then is it logical to say that you know the the chances of you feeling down? Less in the future. Yes. Alright. Okay. What about like the uh, you talk about there were periods that you have a lot of energy. Yeah. Would you like to manage that energy better? Um I have fun with those. <laughs> but um, I guess that there are, there are different sides to it too. Like I'll, I'll tend to be sometimes a little bit irresponsible in my enthusiasm. I'll make stuff happen, but I'll be like, all right, I'm signing the contract right now, let's do it and um, overly zealous sometimes with business decisions um, or romantic sexual decisions. Um, so I guess, yeah, to balance things out a little bit would be good, but I guess it all comes down to self-esteem because when I'm depressed, I right. just have no self-esteem. And then when I'm hypomanic, I'm also telling myself, like I'm asserting myself even more because I have low self-esteem. It's like, you know. Right. I can, I can I, see that happen. 
I want people to look at me. I'm dancing on the table, right, or right. I'm making this decision. I'm making this happen. I'm doing it. I've got you know balls or whatever. Like, um, but it all comes down to low self-esteem. I think both of them basically. Well, tell us what what are some of the craziest things you've done? Oh God. <laughs> Um, I started a company, um, I've, I mean, I started a company like within days or something like that. Wow, I didn't impressive. sleep for about a week, I, um, just writing business manifestos and doing this and getting that, um, together. Um, I don't know, I, I met Axl Rose in a New York City club and I ended up like, mm -hmm. um, hanging out with him for like a week and I went to all the shows in New York. Um, oh, yeah. uh, like just hanging out, like there was nothing sexual or anything, but oh, it was yeah, like, um, I don't know, I, I just become very fearless. Or yeah, I, I, I mean, I've danced on bars and oh, yeah. taken off my shirt and oh, yeah. um, I don't know, I get, what else have I done that's crazy? <laughs> um, yeah. Tell us more about your company. This is the, uh, the booking, job, yeah. booking company. Mm -hmm. Tell us more your aspiration for that company. I want to take over the world. <laughs> All right. Um, Hypnosis could definitely help you do that. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Yay. But um, my main goal, I guess, is to remain in control of my life. And I, with my company, um, I don't burn any bridges. I go out only when I think I'm going to meet someone that I can um, get work from or hire or use as a contact. I'm very good at staying in touch with people um, and anytime there's an opportunity, um, I'll take it. And the only reason that I got into the music business, well I used to be a radio show host in Switzerland years ago oh, really? and then, yeah. Do you speak French? It's my first language. Do you speak German? Uh, yes, not as well as French, but... Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> That's very much all I've done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I could just, you know, answer your questions in French if you'd rather. Oh, yeah. But, um. Yeah, do that. So, what is the most craziest thing you've done? Je danse sur les bars. Des fois, je. Mais je sais pas, ça dépend ce que tu veux savoir, mais des fois. Ouais, je danse sur les bars, ou sinon. Je sais pas, j'ai fait plein de décisions qui sont pas les meilleures. Euh, j'ai commencé un business et je suis pas dormi pendant une semaine. Et euh, puis voilà. Ah. Tu veux que je continue de parler français? Ah. Ah. <rire> so, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, my company. So, I... I used to be a radio show host. I've got a 10-year subscription to Rolling Stone magazine. I love, you know, music, but um, I know a lot of people who are professional models, and right. you know, they reach the age of 25, and <laughs> that's it. They have right. no career. Yeah. They have no college education because they've been too busy modeling. Um, you know, you've got to do it when you're young, um, and they just don't. They haven't. They've traveled the world and made a lot of money and made a lot of contacts and done absolutely nothing with it. You know, gotten right. comped into all the nicest restaurants and nightclubs, right. not paid for anything, and then suddenly it's like, oh shit, what do I do now? Right. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I was meeting people and traveling with the modeling, and I was like, you know, I've introduced a lot of people to other people, like the thing with Axl Rose, you know. Right. Um, I might as well be making money off of that. So. There's a group of Italians, for example, who want to book Guns N' Roses on a mini tour. So I called up Axel and got him to introduce me to his manager, and wow. I started dealing with the manager, with the Italians, brokering the deal between them. Um, but then I also do smaller stuff, you know. Um, Snitch, for example, is a rock bar. My friend wow. just bought some shares in it. Um, so I should take you out to lunch more often. <laughs> more often, I haven't. I haven't gotten lunch today. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, uh, when an opportunity presents itself, if I, I like having, I mean, I guess it's all a power trip, too. It's like, if uh -huh. I, if I hear a band that I like, I go out with my friends, I hear a band that I like, I'll be like, all right, you, I'm going to book you. And I'll get the money, and I will book them, and I'll make money off of it, and, um, but I like being able to do that, um. And I just feel like, you know, all of the contacts that I've made throughout the music business, um, 
and various other entertainment businesses. Like I'm kind of covering <laughs> covering all the ground. Um, and I enjoy that side of it too. I'm so used to just being like the talent, the performer, sit so here, do that, do this, you know, here's your paycheck that I really enjoy like working with contracts and brokering deals and business lunches. <laughs> so yeah. So where I want to go with my company is, um, you know, not turn down or lose out on any opportunities and keep pursuing them. Um, have fun with it, you know. Uh, I get to go to concerts for free and I get to meet a lot of fun people and I don't have to work for anyone else. <laughs> Sounds great. And, yeah. Sounds great. Um, so what we're about to do right now is, would you like a drink of water before we start? I'm okay actually. Well, there's a, a thing, water is over there if you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we're about to do is hypnosis. I'm going to put you in a state of relaxation and, you know, you don't have to do, actively do anything. Um, don't try to go into hypnosis. Um, just listen to the sound of my voice and just follow the, uh, the instructions.